Was it avoidable? This is what I will cover in this video. On March 26, 2024, a container ship Dali alighted with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, United States, causing a catastrophic structural failure of the bridge in which, sadly, six people died, and this is not the first time Dali hits a port infrastructure. I will give a brief details about the port and the ship, we'll talk about the composition of the crew on board Dali, we'll go through the timeline of the events, and at the end, we'll discuss if this incident could be avoided or not. Hi everyone, if you are new here, my name is Mustafa and I'm a ship's captain on board vessels similar in size of Dali. Baltimore Port Baltimore is the busiest US port of the car shipments and also the largest US port by volume for handling firm and construction machinery. More than 750,000 cars and vehicles passed through Baltimore in the last year only. The Key Bridge opened in March 1977. It was inaugurated in honor of Francis Scott Key, an American lawyer and amateur poet who is best known as the author of the words to the US national anthem. Boston principal span measuring more than 365 meters with a total length of 2.57 kilometers, it claimed the distinction of being the third longest continuous thrust span worldwide and played pivotal role as a vital connection. Dali is a container ship with an overall length of 300 meters, equivalent to three football fields and her draft 15 meters, equivalent to full-size school bus. She can carry 116,000 tons, which is equivalent to 264 Boeing 7478, which is the world's longest currently operational passenger airliner at maximum takeoff weight. Her container capacity is 10,020 foot equivalent unit, and on that day, she was carrying on board 4,679 TU. Dali was delivered in 2015 to owner Ocean Bulk Maritime and was registered in Majuro, Marshall Islands. She has a sister ship, Cizani, and both of them were inaugurated with the names of painters Salvador Dali and Paul Cizani. Now she is under the flag of Singapore and owned by Grace Ocean PTE, also Singapore based. She is managed by Synergy Marine Group and Maersk chartered the ship for the trip to Sri Lanka. You may check out this video here where I explain how to charter or rent a ship like Dali. Anyway, this is not the first time Dali hits a port infrastructure. On July 11, 2016, Dali alighted with the birth of the container terminal in the port of Antwerp, Belgium, causing significant damage to her stern and transom. The berth was also damaged and closed for cargo handling operations. No report injuries or water pollution occurred at that time. Crew on board. As per the reports, 22 crew members were on board the ship and two pilots. From what I know, I assume the composition is as follow. Captain, Chief Officer, Second Officer, Third Officer for the Deck Officers, Bosun, 4 ABs and 2 OS for Deck Ratings, Chief Engineer, Second Engineer, Third Engineer, Fourth Engineer, Electric Engineer for Engine Officers or Engineers, Fitter, 3 Oilers or Wipers for Engine Ratings, a Cook, a Messman for Galley Crew. At the time of accident, they were on the bridge, the captain, who holds ultimate commands and the responsibility of the vessel, the chief officer to assist the captain, helmsman, a seaman who executes the master's and pilot's orders of the manual steering, and lookout, who is an extra seaman to keep a proper wash during critical stages of the ship's operation, like ports approach, channels, straits, etc and the composition of the engine room, the chief engineer, the third engineer, and one oiler or wiper. Usually only one pilot boards the vessel. Some ports require two pilots though. However, in this case, there was one main pilot and one trainee pilot who was an apprentice just has started his training last month. The harbor pilot is a mariner who has specific knowledge of an often dangerous or congested waterway, such as harbors or river mouths. Maritime pilots know local details such as depth, currents and hazards. They board and temporarily join the crew to safely guide the ship's passage, so they must also have expertise in handling ships of all types and sizes. Timeline of events. The US National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, shared data from the Dali's Voyage Data Recorder, VDR, which is similar to the plain black box on the minutes prior to contact 
with the Francis Scott Cambridge. The timeline of events from the VDR were read as follows. On March 26, 2024, at 12 a.m. 39 minutes, the two pilots boarded the vessel and departed, heading to Colombo, Sri Lanka for a journey of 27 days. At 0107, the ship had entered the channel and the pilots dismissed the tugs. And this was the pivot point for the situation. We'll talk about it later. At 0124, the ship was underway on true heading of 141 at speed of approximately 8 knots, which is slow ahead. At 0124, 59 seconds, the ship lost her power, a total blackout. At 0125, 50 seconds, electric power resumed, but I believe here only the emergency generator started. We'll discuss this in another video. At 0126, 39 seconds, ship's pilot made a VHF call for tax in the vicinity to assist. Despite the chaos, they managed to issue a Mayday call warning authorities that a collision was imminent. At 0127-04 second, pilot ordered vessel to drop port anchor along with additional steering commands. The port anchor was dropped to slow down the vessel, which was at around 8 knots. And then another blackout soon after. At 0127-25 second, pilot issued VHF radio call warning the Dali had lost all power and was approaching the bridge. That made the call has been credited with saving lives. At 0129 minutes, ship speed recorded at just under 7 knots. At 0129 33 seconds, video recorder holds sounds consistent with the bridge collision. At 0129 39 seconds, pilot reported the bridge down over VHF to US Coast Guard. 40 minutes later, at 0143 minutes, the first tug arrived, but it was too late. Was it avoidable? This was real chaos on the ship's bridge at minutes from the collision and incredibly stressful. So I'm not here to say I would do that or I would do this from my comfy office chair. You need to be in their shoes. Honestly, the actions taken by the captain and pilot were very swift, such as ordering to drop the anchor two minutes after the blackout and seconds later broadcasting a mayday call to close the cable bridge and prevent the loss of other lives. So, was it avoidable? I would say yes and no. Yes, because it is common that such big vessels are escorted with tugs until they are clear from the ports. In that case, the tugs were needed to keep escorting the vessel until she is clear from the cable bridge. If the tugs were there, then they could come alongside and start pushing Dali to clear her from the bridge pier and pass through the principal span. I believe it is not the pilot fault to dismiss the tugs, but a port regulation that has been followed here that the tugs should be released when entering the channel. Second point is they could drop both anchors instead of one, even though two anchors dragging will not stop this ship at 8 knots, but in this situation all means should be used. And now this cannot be avoided because a total blackout at 8 knots and short distance from the bridge with no steering gear and no engine, you have no control over the vessel and you can do nothing to stop her or change her course. The focus is now turning to the investigation into what went wrong, with a team of transportation safety experts on board. US officials said it could take up to two years to ascertain why the ship malfunctioned. What exactly led to the loss of power on board Dali remains unclear, but I will cover in this video here what could be happening on board the vessel minutes before the elision. And you may check out this video here to have an idea how these big ships turn. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.